Okay, why don't we uh, why don't we start off? Um, happy Thursday, everyone! Thanks for tuning in uh, to today's webinar. Um, for those of you that don't know, my name is Shafin Diamond. I'm the CEO of Victory Square Technologies. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, we have a special guest uh, today, Mark Tadros, the CEO of Stardust Solar, which is a portfolio company of, of VST, and he'll be sharing the Stardust uh, Solar story today on today's webinar. Before we hand it off uh, to Mark, um, I'll just give a quick refresher for anyone that's new uh, on Victory Square. Victory Square is a venture builder. Um, our focus is on investing in disruptive innovation. We provide investors with a, a liquid way to invest in early stage technology companies uh, without buying a, a venture fund that requires accredited investor status or multi-year commitments. And it's a great way to diversify into early stage venture. Um, as an example, with Mark and Stardust today, it's a private company that a lot of investors uh, may not, it may not fall on a lot of investors' radar, but by being an investor in VST, they have you know, exposure to it and uh, have an opportunity to, to meet really uh, exceptional founders that we've kind of vetted for them. Uh, a couple of quick highlights, we've got 25, uh, a portfolio of 25 next-gen tech companies. Uh, the sectors that we focus on, uh, digital health, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, virtual and augmented reality, gaming, and climate tech. We've got a NAV currently of approximately 80 million, which is, which is I think around, you know, our market cap is, is, is six times less than that, which I think tracked today, maybe at a close of around 13 million. Um, we've got really long runway, um, solid, uh, you know, solid cash position, uh, strong inside ownership. Um, so again, great great time for people to, to pay attention to uh, Victory Square. Um, so without further ado, uh, for the main event, so let's turn it over to Mark uh, to share the Stardust story. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to submit them during the presentation. And at the end, we'll do a, we'll do a quick uh, Q&A with, uh, with Mark. So thanks, man. Take it over, Mark. Sure. Thank you, Shafin. Uh, really appreciate the introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, really excited to present Stardust Solar to you today. Uh, this is truly my passion project, something I've been working on for seven years. A little background on myself before I start. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur for well over a decade and had a few marked companies that did well. Uh, the first was a company I started called Pro Draft League. And it's relevant because that company actually got listed um, on the CSE as Fantasy VI. Uh, so I've lived through the public process before and really excited to take that knowledge, that experience, parlay that into Stardust Solar and bring another one of my babies uh, to the public markets. Another company I started was called iHazmat, uh, also relevant to the story that one I sold in 2019, it was a private company and we sold to our largest competitor, a company called ICC. Uh, but the reason it's important to the story is the business model there at iHazmat was a training and compliance business in the transport of dangerous goods industry. So completely different industry, but that was the, um, the initial spark that gave me the idea to create Stardust Solar, which originally began as an installation company. Uh, and you know, I did the installs myself five, six, seven years ago, getting up on the roof, digging the trench, putting the panels down, just so I could really learn the business. But the place where we made our signature is when we created our training and compliance business model for the solar industry, which has been uh, extremely successful and actually built the signature of our brand. So I'll jump in now to the actual presentation, just bear with me here. There we go. Hopefully that's coming through okay for everybody. So Stardust Solar, if I had to put a headline on it, is gonna be the Starbucks of the solar world. So we are the fastest growing solar franchise business in North America. Essentially what we're doing is empowering franchisees through training, distribution, resources, uh, customer service. There's a long list of services and I'll get into those. We're empowering our franchisees to go out and be the boots on the ground, 
to do installation services for the residential solar market. That's another key difference about a lot of the other uh, public companies that are out there. A lot of them are focused on commercial. We are heavily focused on residential installation and also small commercial. So um, a couple of quick highlights to talk about our business. We've grown 100% year over year the last two years. 2021, we did just under a million dollars. Last year, we did 2 million. And this year, we're tracking right now to do about 3.5 to $4 million in revenue. Last year was our first full year, or sorry, 2021 was our first full year in the franchising industry. And we onboarded four franchisees. Last year, we added 12. So today, we're actually sitting with 16 franchisees and we are coast to coast, everywhere from Halifax to Victoria, everywhere in, bet in between. And really proud to say we also opened our first franchisee in the US in the state of Oklahoma. Very exciting stuff. And I'll talk about US expansion a little bit later in the presentation. We currently have, it says here over a thousand, the exact number is 1,293 franchise applications in our system. You know, it, it's, it's unbelievable uh, the amount of demand we get for solar franchises with only a $10 per day marketing spend. That's a real number, $10 per day generating that huge volume. Now, certainly there's a few in there, you know, th there's a bulk in there that are just tire kickers, but it shows you the demand um, for our business model. Furthermore, uh, really proud to announce that we partnered with Tesla last year in December. In December, we received our certified installer certificate to install Tesla products across North America. And we're now able to offer that as an added value to our franchisees. You know, the Powerwall, the Tesla Powerwall energy storage unit is the best tech in the industry. And it's just a feather in our cap that we can offer that brand in conjunction with the Stardust Solar brand. US expansion, as I mentioned, we signed our first franchisee in Oklahoma. And what a great franchisee, an electrical contractor that services the entire state, 26 electricians on staff, 12 trucks working in the field. And he's given us that uh, you know, tip of the spear for the US, the entire state of Oklahoma is now being serviced through Stardust Solar Franchise. Furthermore, we're the largest training provider in Canada. We have trained and certified. And you know, I'm gonna come back a lot to the training and education component. It's such a critical part of our story. And um, to date, we've now trained over 2,500 people in Canada and the US. So moving forward, um, what's coming next? So we're preparing for a public listing this year. We're looking at fall most likely uh, when we'll actually start trading. And what we're gonna be doing with those funds and that, uh, you know, that catapult that we'll get through the public markets is create our internal distribution network. It's a critical component for us. We're already a very high margin business, but this will actually increase our largest revenue driver by an additional 10%. So we make 10% or sorry, we make 15% today on distribution of equipment, building out our own distribution model, cutting out the uh, wholesalers will push us up to 25% margin. And with the public market funds, one of the first plans to do after we list is to turn around, go to Asia and start developing our own distribution network. Furthermore, we plan that uh, 12 months after listing, we'll have 40 to 50 franchisees with significant growth in the US, up over 10 franchisees in that market. As well, we expect to have five to $10 million within the next 12 months after listing uh, with a positive EBITDA. Another nice piece, we've been adding team members like crazy this year, scaling up, preparing for our listing. We were able to snap um, Lawson Lim, who's an expert in franchise branding, and has been working with Next, Nurse Next Door as an executive for the last seven years. Very, very excited to bring Lawson on. He's actually the vision behind the brand and the fellow who created our color palette as well. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the franchise model. 
This model was built by a gentleman named Clark Harrow, okay, uh, from Dale and Lessman out of Toronto. Dale and Lessman is one of the top franchise legal firms in all of Canada, and Clark Harrow has been uh, the lead for Tim Hortons for 13 years in Canada and seven years with McDonald's. This is the gentleman that not only built our business model, but also uh, built all of our disclosure documents and our agreements. What you'll find when you look under the hood at Stardust Solar is our documentation and our accounting is extremely crisp. So it's 35,000 for a franchisee to buy a territory that usually ranges between 250 to 500,000 people. We charge a 5% royalty on revenues, not on profits. And those are royalties in perpetuity on the franchise. And then, as I mentioned before, 15% uh, on our distribution contract, all of the franchisees are mandated to buy all their solar panels, their inverters, their racking, all the solar equipment from head office. And we will be boosting this to 25% once we create our own supply chain distribution network. Moving forward, uh, the growth of the solar industry, look, at the end of the day, there's a million articles you can Google about solar in North America. There's a few nice ones here from the Department of Energy. What I can tell you is the industry is, you know, it's booming through a lot of different channels. You know, there's incentives. The price of equipment has come down drastically over the last two years. And the technology just keeps getting better every year. So the solar industry is finally ripe for expansion in North America. And today at this moment, it's only 3% adopted in the US and 1.5% adopted in Canada. They estimate that in the next 20 to 30 years, those numbers will be above 35% adopted for residential homes. And if you just think about the magnitude of that opportunity, there's just a ton of work for us to do, not only as franchisors, but as franchisees and installers in the industry. So what makes us unique? You know, th this is kind of the key question that I get from a lot of investors and people wanna know what makes us special. Well, look, at, at the end of the day, the franchise model is just a beautiful way to scale inside the solar industry. By definition, franchising is a modular business and you just need to pour money on that once you get the sauce right to scale it up. But the most important differentiator for us is that we have accredited training. You know, and this almost happened by mistake. As I mentioned at the beginning of the call, the company began as an education and compliance business. And when COVID hit, we had to, you know, pivot and reinvent our models. It was really hard to hold classes with 20 people and get people in a room. And that's where we dreamed up the franchise model, but it's just worked seamlessly together. Um, and this is something we have accredited training that our competitors in the franchise world cannot offer their franchisees. It's a huge advantage in the, in the solar franchise world. Business model. Um, I'll go over this quickly. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of questions about you know, margins and uh, the, the uh, structure of the business model, but essentially there's a few pillars in our business. So again, the education and training, and I'll talk about that on the next slide about the accreditations we have, which creates accredited installers across North America, now over 2,500. And those are a feeder system for our franchise model. So our students become our franchisees, and we also onboard franchisees who haven't gone through training, and then they go the other way and get trained through our schools. So these two components work very well together. The franchisees, as I mentioned in the beginning, are the boots on the ground for our head office. They're doing the installation service of solar panels, energy storage, and electric vehicle chargers. Those are the three target markets that we're attacking through our franchise model, and our training provides them with the resources to do all of those. And then as mentioned, the distribution model, which is another pillar of our business, um, we sell the equipment to the franchisees and also to people who are looking to buy from us uh, as a wholesaler. So the accreditation of our training, 
You know, I've boasted a lot about our training here, but it's really important to recognize there are only five companies in Canada listed as approved CSA trainers. And if you go to the CSA website, you'll find Stardust Solar there. It's just a, a testament to how strong our training is and our ability to bring people to the market. Not to mention, if eventually this becomes its own trade, which is what I believe will happen in the next five, 10 years, solar installation, wind installation, renewable energy installation will become a unique trade. There's a high probability that CSA will be the governing body uh, for that segment as they are today, the only organization to approve the equipment. So you can't install a solar panel in Canada that doesn't have a CSA stamp on it. And I'm really proud to tell you that there's five companies in the training industry that are approved. You'll find Stardust Solar on the CSA website. Furthermore, we're actually not only approved by NABCEP, we are a proctor of NABCEP, which means that you can earn a NABCEP seal anywhere at any of our uh, Stardust Solar training facilities in Canada or the US. And for those of you that are not familiar with NABCEP, it's actually the North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners. It is the largest renewable energy organization in the US, and we're already vetted and approved by them as well as CSA in Canada. So we're well established with our training on both sides of the border. Another nice added value. So, you know, definitely the education is the uh, piece that keeps us ahead of the curve, but we have other nice offerings that our competitors in the franchise world do not. The first is our partnership with Tesla. We can actually offer these products downstream to our franchisees. It's a beautiful thing that we can offer them as they come in the door. And we also have a partnership to distribute sun power equipment. They're not listed on the slide, but it is a publicly traded company. I believe they're on the NASDAQ with a $12 billion market cap. The nice thing about SunPower is they produce the number one efficient solar panel in the world and Stardust also has access to their equipment. So we got the best energy storage partnership and we got the best solar panel energy, or sorry, the solar panel um, partnership as well. Distribution for North America on both products. So today, um, it says here we have 15 franchisees. We're actually at 16. We signed one at the beginning of the year. We currently have seven training facilities. One is out in the Maritimes, which is this company here. We completed an acquisition um, in 2021 during the pandemic, a company called the Canadian Solar Institute, who was our largest competitor in the training world. Um, we acquired this business, took over their operations in the Maritimes, and they are still working with us today. We're right across Canada with training, also in New Mexico and Wisconsin in the U.S. So the future. This is kind of what everybody wants to know. What are our plans? So we have 15 franchisees in Canada right now. My estimate is we'll finish with 25 at the end of this year. You know, I would never say we're finished in Canada because, you know, you can keep segmenting and uh, reducing the size of territories, getting more granular. But the big play here is we're going to use the public markets to generate a bunch of capital for the business and then go into the U.S. very aggressively to grow there quickly. We already have an acquisition strategy to buy maybe five or ten small electrical contractors that have very good reputations in target cities like Anaheim, Seattle, New York. And these acquisitions will be fairly cheap, maybe $500,000 in all stock deals. But what it'll do is it'll springboard us into the US market and we'll use stock to do that and create a footprint immediately in the US. The goal here is to try to get us to 200 franchisees by the end of 2026 with 80%, 80% of those franchisees being in the US. So the US is everything for us starting next year. The team, I told you a little bit about myself, entrepreneur, uh, Evan Kramer, he's the guy who actually started the business with me, wrote all of our accredited training, um, has a master's degree in environmental sciences and 
understands the impacts on our environment better than anybody I know. Uh, also, Eamon McHugh, I'd like to highlight him, the Chief Operating Officer at Stardust Solar, also Master Electrician in British Columbia and Alberta, has over 10,000 hours under his belt in electrical work, installed hundreds of systems across North America, just an excellent team. And I can't say enough about the group of people we have working at Stardust Solar. We're littered with electrical engineers, electricians, experts in the field. Okay, uh, projected performance. You know, I touched on this slide already. Um, 2021, we did just shy of a million. Last year, 2 million. We're on track for 4 million. The ultimate goal is to get us to 200 franchisees end of 2026 with at least $50 million in revenues. Conservative projections in my mind. So the reason we're all here today, the public offering that's coming. Right now, at this moment, uh, we're preparing to open, I believe it's tomorrow, uh, maybe Monday, our 25 cent financing. We're offering 6 million shares. We'll be raising $1.5 million. And that equates to an $18 million market cap. Um, please, for anybody that's interested, take my email down. It's very simple. Mark, M-A-R-K, at stardustsolar.com. And right away after the presentation, I can send you a subscription agreement. I'll also send you a copy of the deck and a few notes about our company that I'm not gonna cover in the presentation. Comparable stocks. Um, so, you know, there's a few here. UGE is an interesting one. I've uh, been following them for a long time. They're in the commercial space. I think really the one to talk about is Solar Bank. For any of you that are following it or haven't, I highly recommend you take a look. I think it went up something like 15% just today and it's actually trading at $3.50 and approaching a $100 million market cap. They went public last month at 75 cents, and today they're actually listed at 350. So there's some really nice comparables here, but I'd like to point out to you the gross margins on these businesses. The reason we're going after the residential market is primarily the margins. The commercial business, which is you know very nice because it's big dollar volume, has um, you know there, there's big revenues, smaller margins on those commercial projects that go out to tender. Our business model allows us to scale, get national, attack the residential market, and go after that high margin business. So use of funds, just really quickly here, um, something I highlight to every investor I talk to. Stardust Solar is not a research and development company. We're not building some kind of software that's got a black hole of R&D that we're gonna put money into till we get the software right, or we're building a robot somewhere. No, this is a scalable business model with a really strong foundation that just needs funding to scale up. You know, we've proven our sauce in the last three years 16 franchisees across North America. It's time now for us to scale up. And it's, it's also about timing, perfect timing with where the market is at and for the demand that's coming for solar. So you'll see here, the use of funds is primarily marketing and scaling up our staffing. A really quick touch on, um, you know, what's happening in our industry and where that demand is coming from. So, um, you know, before I get into the incentives, the first thing people should recognize is installing solar on a residential property actually gives you an equity boost of three to 4%. A lot of people don't realize that, but it's very logical. In today's world, people will pay more for a property that has a renewable energy generator installed versus one that doesn't. Second is the ROI. And this has to do with the technology and the cost of the equipment. That, that inverse relationship where the cost is going down, but the tech is going up, has produced this awesome nexus that's giving even homeowners in Canada. Like, look, we're in Vancouver. I'm sure anybody who's in Vancouver today will tell you, you know, there's no sun today. Um, it's raining pretty bad. But even in Vancouver, we can offer homeowners a 13-year return on investment on buying solar 
And those arrays are guaranteed for 25 years on the property. So you're literally getting your money back in half the lifespan that it'll last you. But finally, the most important thing is the government incentives. I've never seen this before. You know, I've been in the industry for seven years and the incentives that are coming through in Canada and the US are almost too good to believe. So there's the Greener Homes Grant where the federal government will pay you 5,000 cash to install solar on your home. Then they added the Greener Homes Loan where they'll offer you up to $40,000, 0% interest for 10 years for the balance of the array, 0% interest. Can't believe it. And then just this week, uh, the Liberal government, Trudeau, announced an ITC uh, tax credit on top of all that. So homeowners are also going to be getting in 2024 15% personal income tax credit incentive to install solar. And in the U.S., it's a 30% tax credit. <clears throat> so you can see that the governments are pushing extremely hard. It means nothing but blue sky for our industry as we move forward. Finally, just a quick piece about our charitable donations. Um, you know, we've pledged, we work with a company called Eden Reforestation and at Stardust Solar for every panel we install on a home, we plant 10 trees in a country affected by deforestation. It's a small thing, um, but we believe it's important to give back when you can give back. And this has turned into what we call our environmental multiplier. And let me tell you something, Homeowners love nothing more than seeing their solar array get turned on and then getting a certificate that tells them they planted 260 trees in Madagascar, for example. Lastly, if you wanna get some testimonials, I encourage you to Google our company, Stardust Solar. You'll find a lot of independent reviews. There's a few listed here in the deck. And again, I'd just like to summarize by saying, if anybody is interested in more information, you're looking for a subscription agreement, want to participate on the 25 cent round, please email me at mark at stardustsolar.com. I'll be happy to send you the information along with the deck. Okay, Shafin, I'll hand it back to you. That's the, uh, the cover of the presentation. Thanks so much. <clears throat> Thanks so much, Mark. Uh... A lot of exciting things on the horizon for Stardust, which is good for VST and, <laughs> and, and VST shareholders. Um, you know, we had a bunch of questions come in. Uh, first off, um, we had a comment that um, they couldn't see the slide. So, um, uh, yeah, uh, so I, I'm not sure if a lot of people experienced that. Um, and if so, I apologize. On our side, it looked clean and clear. Um, we recorded this, and so we'll also share this so that people can 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 review this um, on their own offline, and we'll also share that um, by email with with the deck. And like Mark said, I think uh, if anyone has any questions, they can reach out directly to Mark uh, around the the financing and or potentially becoming a franchisee. Um, you know, we've got a lot of really really innovative entrepreneurial shareholders in the U.S. and Canada, and who knows, someone might be in a in a in a territory where there's a there's an opportunity. Um, so just getting to some of the questions, uh, I guess, you know, the first one, um, why go public now? Sure. Um, look, it, it, I got asked this question a few times before. It's just really important for us to scale the business and get big quickly. I, I think that the timing is right for us to capture the market. Also, having lived through the go public process once before, I thought this was just the perfect complement for our modular business. And um, the aspiration here is to get big quick. And I thought there'd be no better way uh, than to go through the public markets to do that. Yeah, no, definitely. I think with some of the examples uh, you shared with us, um, you know, with where those companies were trading at from a market cap uh, level and with the growth in the industry, um, definitely, I think the the ability to uh, to expand quickly uh, using you know your share price as a currency to to, to roll up assets is a huge advantage. Um, there's another question that came up here. I think you covered it in one of the slides, but it might be good just to reinforce. Um, uh, are there any comparable solar companies um, listed? 
just general solar companies, there are. Uh, we talked a little bit, again, I'd like to, you know, we talked about UGE, but also Solar Bank. I think the ticker symbol is S-U-N-N. Uh, they're on the CSE. Highly recommend you go take a look at them. Not only because, uh, you know, they're doing so well, but they're similar in terms of their gross margin to Stardust Solar. They listed, I think, 32 days ago. So very, very fresh. Uh, they did their financing at 75 cents. Today, they're trading at 350. We'll be doing our, our go public financing, well, this round at 25 cents. So maybe a little bit of a different multiple, but um, Canadian company, they're on the other side of the coin. They're on the commercial side of the industry, which is why their gross margin is a little bit lower. Uh, we'll be playing in the residential market, which I think will give us those margins and the scalable franchise model should have us competing with them within 12 to 24 months. Um, thanks, Mark. Um, do you have any acquisitions being considered uh, after your public listing? <laughs> we do. And I kind of, you know, flirted with that idea earlier in the presentation about sending some notes. There are two or three companies that we are looking at right now. You know, it's definitely too early to consider them um, uh, acquisitions or baked in at this point. But there's a company in the U.S. that has really nice traction already with 10 plus franchisees that we've been having a lot of discussions with. Uh, they're definitely our priority target and they're very excited about joining us in a public market venture. So there's opportunity there. We're also looking at a very large um, distributor in the East Coast of Canada out of Quebec. Uh, very good relations with these folks. They're training partners of ours and as well, two older gentlemen there that own the company uh, they're currently doing 10 to $20 million in revenues, um, but again, on a lower margin scale and would love to join us on the public venture. And finally, there's a company in the Okanagan that specializes in community solar or microgrids, which is a very common popular term we're seeing thrown around our industry. We've targeted them as a potential acquisition uh, partner and they would bring a unique skill set uh, to our table and really reinforce our uh, dominance in Western Canada. That's great. Um, uh, there's a question that popped up here uh, with revenues tracked for roughly 4 million. Uh, are you guys profitable? If not, when do you foresee that? Yes, we will be profitable this year. Um, I think, you know, if you pulled out our um, listing expenses, legal fees, just our operations alone, we're definitely profitable at this moment. And I believe strongly we'll cross the threshold with one or 2% positive EBITDA at the end of 2023 and revenue somewhere between 3.5 and $4 million. Um, there's, a, there's a question I think you that, that's asked here, but I think you kind of covered it, um, but I'll, I'll add something to it. So the question was, you know, are there any incentives or government programs for solar in Canada. And I think one of the last slides you talked about, yeah. you know, showed about the compounding of, of, of grants there. Is there an opportunity? Because I think I didn't, I wasn't aware of the home owner, like I wasn't aware of those grants. Sure. Is there a marketing strategy whereby which you're offering education and information so that people can, you know, as a lead gen tool for people to become aware? Yeah. Of, and then Stardust can help them source that? Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and again, it's a great thing to highlight in this discussion because it's driving the industry. Um, so yes, first off, we use it as a, a specific, specific ad segment within all of our marketing campaigns across Canada and the US. So we have targeted ads that talk just about um, the incentives that are available. Also, when you hit our landing page anywhere in North America, the first thing you get hit with is a downloadable PDF that walks you through step-by-step step how to apply for the grants and what the benefits are. Um, uh, so next question, um, uh, given market conditions, how did you come up with the $18 million valuation? Um, so that's just based on the current cap table and the listing price, right? So we have just under 80 million shares issued and outstanding amongst our group. And at 25 cents, you're gonna get that $18 million market cap. But here's the good thing. 
I think that if you look at the comparable slide, and I could put it back up if you like, Shafin, or when we circulate the deck, our competitors, or I shouldn't call them competitors, but similar companies that are already listed are commanding those kind of multiples on their revenues. For example, UGE had 2.5 million in revenues, which is very similar to what we did last year, 38% gross margin, and they're trading today at a $37 million market cap. So they only did 500,000 more revenue than us, the private company. They have a smaller gross margin and they're trading at double our projected market cap. I think the 25 cent price point will do very well for a lot of early stage investors. Uh, and just, uh, you know, I think just looking high level at the numbers that you you had, I think um, it seems that that, that, that valuation is a, a byproduct product of uh, a multiple on your, your, your uh, revenues that you're on track for for this year. Um, so it looks like as if, you know, again, if you're on track for three and a half to four uh, this year, you know, it's, it's just under a five, five times multiple, which I think is, was fairly low uh, within the space. So it seems like, you know, kind That's of right. in, line, in, in line. Um, I like this next question, because again, this kind of ties into something you said earlier, which I, a lot of people may not know. Um, so the question is, can you elaborate on how you met Shafin, uh, your pre previous business dealings together and how this current collaboration collaboration is progressing? So I I'll let you take it. But um, <laughs> this is actually just for anyone. This is this is not uh, the first time Mark and I have collaborated. Uh, um, we had a we had a successful uh, project in the fantasy sports space and in 2015, 2016, and we're we're in an annual fantasy football uh, uh, league, which you know it's it's like the if anyone's it's like the Battle of Alberta, uh, <laughs> and I'm always victorious. But uh, I'll let I'll let I'll let you I'll let you expand on 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 answering that question. I, I knew you were going to bring up our fantasy league in this, um, but you know, all joking aside, um, you know, Shafin is uh, uh, somebody who I owe a lot to in my life. He was the first person to give me an opportunity as an entrepreneur way back when, I think it was 2012, a decade ago. Uh, he believed in a project I was working on. I had very little experience. And, uh, you know, we've become great friends since then. And I'm very grateful uh, for everything he's done for me in my career. But that initial project, Pro Draft League, became Fantasy Six, got listed. You know, Shafin and I worked on that together. And all I can tell you is Victory Square, you know, gave me my wings is what I can tell you. So today I'm, you know, entrepreneur out on my own, chasing whatever business model I want. It's why I created Stardust Solar. And a lot of that had to do with not just the support I got from Shafin and Victory Square 10 years ago, but it was the mentorship, the knowledge, the friendship also that he offered me somebody who had moved to Vancouver from Montreal without any contacts in the entire city. Uh, and Shafin was, you know, gracious enough to give me an opportunity. And I think I owe everything to him in my professional career. That's so kind, but you know, in, you know, it's vice versa. I think we're, you know, we're really excited for us. Um, you know, anytime you have an opportunity to work with an entrepreneur and, 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 and you know exactly, because a lot of what VST does is we're betting on people. And so I think the success of that first go around is what kind of gave us the confidence. And yeah, I know you've been, uh, you know, exceeding expectations. So we're excited about the future of that. Um, uh, another question, Mark, uh, can you explain the difference between franchise and installers? Okay. Um, they're quite similar in our model, actually. Okay. So what we're doing is our franchisees are the installers for our brand. Essentially, a franchisee is an installer who's buying a piece of territory from our company and getting exclusive rights on that region. We're about to sell Calgary this week. So that city will belong to the franchisee. Now, the franchisee is the installer. Again, they're the boots on the ground. They're the ones who get up on the roof. They're the ones who meet with the homeowner, kiss the baby, pet the dog, shake their hand, sit at the table. So the installer is the franchisee. And for us as the franchisor, so we are head office for the operation. We do distribution of equipment. We do the marketing, the digital marketing. We do the planning, the engineering, procurement, distribution, plan sets, designs, 
So we control the projects from a high level and the franchisee, the installer is on the local level doing the actual uh, field work. Okay, thanks Mark. Um, uh, and just again, a reference for everyone, uh, you know, we can share the, the, the video uh, Zoom after if anyone missed it or missed anything and, and the deck uh, in case anyone wanted to. To, to go over it. Um, there's another question here. I think this might be more aimed towards VST, but it said, uh, what percent of Stardust will VST own after going public? I believe, um, Mark, you may know this. I think it's probably around, it'll probably be 10%. Yeah, I think post that's listing. actually accurate. Yes, 10%. Yeah, I think 10% post uh, listing roughly around, uh, around there. Um, there's another question here, which again, I think it's, I think this might be more VST related. Um, how much cash do you have now? And, and are you planning to invest in and add new companies uh, to the existing uh, portfolio, uh, to the existing portfolio? Um, yeah, so we, we probably have, we, we don't keep, um, you know, cash with GICs right now paying 5%. Like, so we, we're, we always have our capital working for us, but I would say that our, our cash and, uh, liquid securities are probably around the six million uh, dollar mark right now. Um, we also have, you know, uh, anyone that's followed our story, there's a, a convertible note that I'd set up uh, years ago for the company. If we ever need to tap into any additional uh, capital to grow, um, what you know, whether we plan on investing and in adding any new companies to the portfolio, I think right now our, our real focus is in working with Mark to, you know, have the successful listing of Stardust. Um, we've got draft label. Uh, listing soon. Uh, and really, you know, there's a lot of momentum around hydrate uh, right now and, and really focusing on that. I don't think we look, we're looking outside of our kind of what we've got internally. Um, some of the projects we've been working with uh, under the, the draft label banner in the digital healthcare space are, are cash flowing and they're wholly owned right now. So I think that's where our focus um, uh, will be. Um, Try to see if there's any more. Uh, oh, uh, okay. So we this is this is another follow up question on the installers. So I'm still confused as to the difference of installers and franchise owners. Okay. The, are the trained installers entitled to sell to sell their services, or do they have to be franchise holders to sell their services? Uh, I am. And, it says, and there's a follow into. Are some installers only signed up to install solar on their homes? Okay. I think I understand the question. So. So um, here, here's the, the key thing to remember. So our business has trained 2,500 installers, okay? Because we are a school, that's how we began. So we train everyday people who come into our facility. Those 2,500, they're not all franchisees. There's some that want to take the next level with our company and they buy a franchise from us. They become franchisees, they then, can go do installation work under the Stardust Solar brand and they get all of our services. So I hope that clarifies uh, the question. Really the important thing to, to remember here is we're selling franchises. This is a franchise business and the franchisees are doing the installation work. However, we've trained thousands and thousands of people outside our franchise model how to do installation work and they go and do that independently. Okay. I hope that was clear. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Um, it, it looks, oh, got it. Yep. Thank you, Mark. Um, uh, it looks like there's, that's that's it for questions. I have one last one, I think, before we wrap up. I mean, um, what's the blue sky, you know, opportunity here? What, what's, what's, yeah. your, what's, what's your vision? Well, Mark? look, I, I don't know if there's a limit to how big this can get. Right. Um, I think there's what 40,000 subways across North America. I can tell you, like, our realistic goal is we want to get to 200 franchisees by the end of 2026. However, we've already replicated all of our course material and resources in uh, French and also in Spanish. So, once we get very well situated in the US, and I want to be really clear to the investors, we're not trying to go international across continental yet. Uh, we're focusing on the US for the next few years to get a footprint there while the market grows. But to answer your question, Shafin, we will go to South America. 
you can take this model to Europe, to Asia, to Australia. There's no limitation on where we can go with our model, which is essentially training individuals, not just how to install solar and renewable energies, but teaching them small business. How do you set up a solar panel installation company? What are the key cogs you need to be successful? How do you get the distribution? What are the permits like? All these things that go into our secret sauce can be taken everywhere. And in my mind, this company will grow with the renewable energy, renewable energy industry all the way through 2050 and could end up being tens of thousands of units across the world. Love it. Love to hear that. Um, Mark, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, just a couple of notes for people that have you know, tuned in. In our experience with Mark, you know, there are a couple of, you know, really important skill sets that we've seen. One, um, he does what he says he's going to do. Um, so he executes as an operator, you know, with a lot of companies we work with, um, especially in a lot of first time founder situations, there's a lot of handholding. In this case, there's not, um, you know, I think uh, Mark is a great operator, very fiscally disciplined. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not one of those businesses, like I think he had mentioned, in a lot of cases, you know, and our shareholders will know we deal with some sort of verticals that it take a bit, take a bit longer um uh you know to to grow their revenues and their and their profit uh and so there's a lot of capital that sometimes goes into r&d and it's not the case here you know the great thing about the combination of you know renewables and a bricks and mortar business that cash flows um you know is 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 really exciting so you know we've we've been a you know big big fan uh, mark succeeded our expectations so I, I highly suggest um you know we'll we'll share the information the video in the deck and 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 mark's very responsive so anyone that's interested reach out and if anyone here is in um uh in bc or in, in vancouver i'm sure you know he'd even host a tour uh, of the stardust uh, facility to see you know firsthand that's always a great thing to meet the founder in person and be able to see um you know the business in action so um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Mark, uh, thanks for, for 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 joining us, man. Uh, and uh, you got to spend some more time prepping for a fantasy next year, buddy. <laughs> of course, Shafin. Hey, listen, um, my absolute pleasure to, to join everybody today. Uh, thank you to VST, Shafin, for the opportunity. And yes, absolutely. Anybody looking to reach out to me, please email me. You're welcome. We're in South Burnaby on the Riverway Golf Course. Be happy to show you around our facility. Uh, mark at stardustsolar.com. And thank you again for uh, listening to my story and hearing our pitch today. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.